Hello, hello, hello and welcome to The New Normal, the show about life and feminism in a lockdown. And today my incredible guest is Jamie Lee O'Donnell, who you will know and love as Michelle in Derry Girls, but also has an enormous, great big fizzing, throbbing career left, right and centre outside of Derry Girls and is one of my favourite people to work with on stage. Um... And backstage, she's incredibly funny. Um, hi, uh, and just good fun, uh, just such a good natured spirit. Uh, we did the Secret Policeman's tour together in Edinburgh, and it was such a laugh riot. And I just thought, oh my God, she's just one of my favourite people in the whole world that I've ever met. So I'm very, very excited uh, to bring her on today. So let me see if she's there. Hold on, I have to press the right buttons. That is, that is my cat, that's toast. Add. In five, four, three, two, one. Hi. Hey. Hello, Jamie Lee. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. I um. It's Friday night, and I usually this this show is normally sponsored. Oh shit! I've just got my cocktail all over my bed. Oh, that's gosh. No, it's fine. I haven't spilled most of it. I normally this show is normally sponsored by Diet Coke. Oh, okay. hold on. I'm getting feedback. Mm. Have you got headphones by any chance? Yes. Do you want yes, to one I shall, I shall. Ah, oh, dear. Oh. Yes, this show is normally sponsored by Diet Coke. Um, they don't know they sponsor it. We're just, we're just hoping that one day they'll give us £10,000 as a joke. But on Friday, it's sponsored by cocktails. We know there's lots of feedback. She's getting her headphones. It was only a splash. It was a splash of cocktail. Um, okay, Toast, can, they're getting too much feedback when I speak. So can you talk to the people? Look. Hello. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Let's go live. Oh, there she is. This is the this is the, this is the content we want. This is the content. Sorry, Deb, I'm trying to find headphones. Don't worry, I'm busking. <laughs> I'm busking with my cat. <laughs> this is the song, Gay Paul. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Paul, Paul, did you say? Yes. Hello, yeah. Paul. Very no, shy. No, go here, Bando. Oh. Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. So much better. Let's see. Is that better? A million times better. Okay. Can she hear you? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. I did I did some good cat busking. There's technical things that happen every day. It's just the way television is made now. Mm. Uh, if you watch Graham Norton, it's no more technical than this. It's just people looking at their phones i mean absolutely everybody but yes normally the show is sponsored by diet coke mm -hmm. because they don't know they sponsor it but i'm hoping that if i keep saying that they'll give me ten thousand pounds as a joke oh my god hilarious like say, it's friday so it's sponsored by uh, the woo woo cocktail lovely i um haven't had a drink yet i'm not really drinking oh shit sorry ah so obviously i'm very professional at this um, I just exposed my bra to Instagram Live, so I am less professional by far. Hashtag lockdown. I think so much stuff. We're getting away with so much stuff at the moment because it's just like, oh, it's lockdown. You know, like you come out and your hair is like a pineapple and you're like, guys, lockdown. It's you know what I mean? <laughs> Wrong tell out, it's going so to the shop, true. guys, lockdown. You know what I mean? I think you're very glamorous and beautiful, though, so I made an effort today. I, um, I, I, I did some eyeliner. It's actually a bit too much, I see now. I've made too much effort for lockdown. I think you look good. I've I've put a wee bit of makeup on. This was bright red at one point. And I was like having to sort of cam it down. I was like, where's that guy? It's it's like you get the opportunity to go to the shop or Tesco's. You get to put a brow on. You're like, okay, let's turn it off. You know what exactly. I mean? That's what I feel now. <laughs> but I think I might have overdone it. Given I'm, I've I when my phone is low on battery, I sort mm -hmm. of have to do this show in bed. When it gets up to halfway, I'll go outside. Uh, on with on the terrace with the cocktail yeah. and uh, we'll do it in the sun. Um, people are people are saying we both look good f for Friday, but I don't know if they mean for Friday, considering 
it's Friday. Um, oh my God. Sorry. This is obviously, I'm obviously very professional. If anyone wants to hire me for a wedding or anything, let me know. Just, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to what, be the celebrant? It's what, sorry? Are you going to be the celebrant? I'm saying if I could do some camera work if anybody needs it, because oh, obviously I'm brilliant work. at it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, no. Clearly this is going well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so tell me, Jamie Lee, I haven't seen you for a while. I think last mm -hmm. time we saw each other was at, like, at a stylist event where yes. you were doing something on stage, and I was so excited to run into you because I ran into you with a number of other Derry girls, and that's always a, an absolute laugh. Yes, and that's mad and loud. It's a riot. It's a riot. You're more riotous in real life than on television in a way. Yes, I think so. I think we just sort of, we really, we all get on really well. So we're all good friends. And I think whenever we're together, especially if there's alcohol, there's just a real mischievousness about it. I don't know if it's because we all started being friends and we had, they were like uniforms and there's like a childishness about it. But as soon as we're like let out into the wild and like someone gives us all call, we're like, ah, we just kind of yeah. go mad. And well, because in real life, you're all grown women, not we're yes, not, not nary a schoolgirl among you. We so should know better, out. basically. Yeah, you're allowed out on the red carpets any hour of the week, champagne are flowing. We all have ID, but we act like we're literally 14 standing on the back lane looking for cider as soon as we're all together. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know if we started it, we just, we just all get involved. <laughs> I absolutely love that you're all friends as well because I was quite heartbroken when Kim Cattrall said we ne we were never friends on Sex and City mm. and I was like no <laughs> no you've stolen all those years from me when they haven't they haven't stolen anything from me people do not have to be friends because they're on a television show but it's always nice when they are. helps I think it's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah I think it adds like to the, especially the show you're doing the kind of chemistry of it um I think it really really helps um but anyway you are not you are not uh exclusively a dairy girl you have all sorts of other life to you um yes. and right now you're an actor in lockdown mm -hmm. um, so i want to ask you firstly how the hell are you how are you coping um good grand i think just lucky that touch wood um i'm not sick and i don't know anybody who has sick personally which is brilliant um and just just trying to keep busy which usually consists of eating everything and then having a nap that's the two yeah. go to. It's just like I've I've put on about a stone, which is grand because I sort of think to myself, like the world's in pandemic, people are dying. It's it's terrifying time. No one knows when they're going back to work. No one knows, you know, where their bills are getting paid and all that. So why would you go through all that and then just eat broccoli? Do you know what I mean? You're going to want to relax, fucking enjoy it, eat everything and. And you know what? You know, it's just it's you have to take the pleasures where you can get them, especially in a time like this. And I've been taking them. Absolutely, hear that. And that may already mm. be your T-shirt. I don't know if you know this, Jamie, but every uh, day the guest, the the, the so based on something the guest has said, the mm -hmm. merch store make a T-shirt <laughs> that is on demand, printed, locally sourced. So it would say a quote that you've said. So um, Ellen, who I've just seen, was on, and at one point she just said, "I'm a big gay mess." So her t-shirt <laughs> says big gay mess um, yep. and it says XL and Jones that it says the new normal stay at home and they're sold only on demand and then 100% of the profit comes to you. The merch store doesn't take anything. We don't take anything because we understand artists in lockdown are struggling at the moment because, you know, the normal fees aren't coming in. So yeah. uh, you've already said two t-shirts. You've already <laughs> got two potential t-shirts. You'll make it hard right. to hammer here. Uh, one is... <laughs> Uh, what, what was it? What was the first one? People have already been suggesting them. One is uh, one step one: eat everything. Step two: nap. That's yes. Great. That's a great lockdown T-shirt. And the other one was uh, why go through all this and eat broccoli. So I think people are loving the broccoli. Great T-shirt. Definitely go for broccoli. It makes um, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody here is asking us to say hi. Kata, Kata, Kata Su villager can you please please say hi 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 i'm terrible at this because i i don't know if it's just my i don't know where to look i'm like looking up and down and trying to read no, really fast and about, listen jamie lee that's my job you don't need to worry okay, about great. it but people okay. are loving um people are absolutely loving oh. the broccoli uh the broccoli t-shirt is going to be a big seller um great. so this may be a this may be a big part of your income over the next months or so do you know how much shit I talk? If I thought I could make money just off talking around my arse, I'd be a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is great. I'm going to come on this and just start coming out with shit. 
I mean, <laughs> I think it's gold. That's what I would say. I would say it's it's it, it's uh, it's it, it's captured the imagination of the viewers. Please Happy. make the broccoli T-shirt. People are saying, um, absolutely no question that is going to happen. Hannah from Brilliant. the merch store. This was Hannah from the merch store's idea, and I think it's so nice. Hannah it is. From the merch store, we need to get that broccoli T-shirt out there. A <laughs> A P. The Can you imagine what the people want? Um, uh, has anything surprised you about this whole situation? Um, how, has has about the way you've reacted or the way human beings have reacted? I think um, I suppose it hasn't really su surprised me. Surprised me, but how everyone's kind of pulled together has been really lovely, and how everyone just sort of there's like a global let's all look after people that aren't us. I mean, because obviously we were told for, for ages it was kind of people who had underlying health problems, people who were, you know, like the elderly. And yeah. how everybody who wasn't within those categories just kind of said, right, well, we need to look after other people. I thought, I thought that, that's a really beautiful thing that was happening. And it was, even if you're having to go do your shopping and things like that and people being aware, like it was just this vibe of everybody standing in the queue. It was maybe in their 20s or 30s and pot potentially not at risk the same way others are, but still maintaining those distances and things like that for others, which is nice. I've really, seen, I've really loved that as well. Do you well, think, does that give you any hope for humanity? Do you think beyond this, people may extend their compassion to, for example, people who are refugees uh, uh, and go, oh, I see now, mm -hmm. something bad happened to you. It wasn't your fault. It just, you had, you had to make a big change in your life. Yeah. You now need... A, a brief period of help. Um, is there? Is do you think a compassion will be extended, or even in our local communities, will we continue to check in on our neighbours, make sure that elderly neighbour has what she needs? Do you do you have any renewed hope because of that? I think so, especially within our communities, because obviously it's it's something that's more prominent in front of you, and something that affects you directly. You're going to be more aware of. Um, and I think with regards to the likes of refugees and things like that, I think I think a lot of it's going to be down to the media and how this is handled afterwards and how we view the world afterwards. If it's going to be like a, you know, everything's fine, it's a free for all again, or is it going to be like, let's let's all adjust and keep some of those sort of values that we had. I think a lot of it's going to be the media, I think. Yeah. Well, also just what communities decide we we like from this. My fear is if the if pace of life speeds up again, Mm -hmm. We may forget and we may look yeah. back on this as a sort of, I'm in a terrible time because, of course, people are dying and people are ill mm. and we're scared and we don't know the future of our industries and all of that sort of thing. But also maybe a sort of incredibly connected, self-aware time. We might look back on this as a sort of time that we, as a sort of weird emotional touchstone. Mm -hmm. Are there any habits you might take forward personally? Is there anything you might do differently now because of something you've learned in lockdown? I think, I suppose, just that general awareness. It might sound silly saying washing my hands because I wash my hands, but the the awareness of where germs can be and where they spread, which you don't think about before. I used to have a real habit of um, touching my mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was like a nervous thing. Um, and you see, you know, if you get like like lip balms and stuff, I've stopped using lip balms. We have to put your finger in and touch your mouth. I know oh. it might sound really small and silly. But um, no, just that, that's quite just, a big hygiene leap, like the way we're yeah. thinking. There's I'm just aware of germs and stuff and, and how, how easily things can spread, I think, is, is something. Like, if I, if I have to go to, obviously, Tesco's or whatever, as soon as you come in, it's almost like you're walking to the sink with your hands, like, oh, get them washed quickly, get something off, you know. You're just so aware of how easy everything can spread. I think that's so true. I did a mm. Mary Berry's Culture lockdown show on BBC Two, and there was a professor of risk from Cambridge University who that's his job he's a, a risk assessor mm -hmm. and he said it's going to take the public a while to kind of go back after lockdown um I think he thinks we might have to have public like even after a vaccine we might have to ha say hey it's okay go back out there live yeah, life, yeah. connect go to the cinema like we might need to encourage ourselves out because we've got used mm. to this but i was saying to him i think there are some things we'll never do again like remember when we used to bring out a birthday cake and ask someone to spit on it and then we'd all have a piece no i've never heard that in my life you know like when you blow out the candles oh like, right, right. You, yeah that's all the drops. oh of course of course of course i, I thought you meant just like eat that <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, <laughs> that's Where do you live? an english custom that you've never yeah. heard of uh ireland like, we're like 
Ooh. do not do that here. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know, but it's just like it's exactly the droplets you're trying to avoid. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When you blow on something, you will. We would blow on the whole cake. Yeah. And I, that's. And let that toddlers do it. Let little smelly toddlers blow. Like, the cake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kids can't blow out candles at all. No, they're, they're one of the many things they're absolutely crap at. You're terrible at it. It's embarrassing. I mean, small children, frankly, are very. It is. They think they're good at everything. They're good at nothing. And I think that's oh, the main takeaway. The bravado <laughs> of them. Ridiculous. <laughs> we need to be brought down a peg or two when this is over. Let me tell you. <laughs> we are being wry, by the way. Don't write in. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the other thing is, and I'm really interested in this, is how it might affect our relationship with intimacy. Mm -hmm. Because it's, don't you think it's weird that we would go out and to a nightclub or something and pull like you know mm. at uni or whatever just people just go out and put their tongue in any old stranger's yeah. mouth yeah do you think things will shift in terms of intimacy especially people who are i don't know what your romantic status is at the moment i'm not prying but it's more sort of generic like mm. you're welcome to talk about that but more sort of generally do, do you think we will shift I don't think so. I think it's a generational thing. I think it's an age thing because at the end of the day, you're still pushing for like teenagers and maybe above that as well to, to, for things like condoms and, and to practice safe sex. And STDs are still around. And I know obviously this is a different virus, but I think that, that risk has always been there. Obviously not as severe as COVID-19, but that risk has been there. And you know, people are still going, haven't got a condom or whatever. And I think, I think there there'll be more awareness of things like shaking hands and hugging and things like that. But when it comes to intimacy, intimacy, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to change anything. I thought I, I suppose it's it's down to um. Excuse me, sorry, it's sorry. just hay fever. Do you I mind? Have not, I haven't got coronavirus. I just want you to know it's hay fever. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. So you yeah. think because we didn't take the uh the warnings around STDs as seriously mm -hmm. as. Uh, we were advised to as a society. I'm not talking yes. about you or me, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but do you think, therefore, we'll be more careful? Because I read a story. It was about. It was a newspaper article about people breaking the lockdown to hook up. It was all yes, anonymous. That's right. And one of them said, "We said, well, we came. She came in, and we both washed our hands really thoroughly, and then we had sex, and she left." And I was like. What is the point of washing your hands if you're going to put your tongues in each other's mouths? Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's, Just, it's I, I mean, it, I suppose if you're if you're up for the ride, you're up for the ride. I think that's the takeaway from that story, isn't it? If you're it's a young shirt, Jamie Lee, uh, and you want a ride, them. you're going to get the ride. You know, what I mean? put a glove. You, you need this. I'm just trying now. I'm actively like trying to get 35 t-shirts made. Uh, if you want a ride, get a ride. Put some love on the glove. Da -da -da. I don't know. Put some love on the glove. I mean, it's a, it's a condom thing. I'm sure oh, someone can work it out on a t-shirt. I was thinking about like, people using gloves because of COVID. Put some but they were talking about intimacy. That's a whole different thing. Mm. Um, it's too early for my conversation, probably. Take no, it's not at all. But I do remember, <laughs> I, do you know what it brought back? When we did the Secret Policeman's tour for Amnesty International in Edinburgh, and uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Jamie Lee and some of the other Derry girls did an amazing, amazing sketch. Uh, I shouldn't say that actually because I wrote it, but it was so funny. The way you performed it was so funny. I wrote it with Siobhan, but, I, but it was so, so fun. You were phenomenal. It was just one of the best performances I've ever seen. Um, and we weren't allowed to record it because it was a unofficial. It was very unofficial. It was off piste. Um, Channel 4 and uh, Lisa very, very kindly gave permission. Um, but then we had this conversation. Do you remember? Yeah. It was meant to be about the environment. And there was a whole thing about how the bees were dying. And do you remember the catchphrase that came from that? Yeah, it was about riding bees. Don't ride, ride the bees. bees. It was ride the bees, and there was a whole hashtag that night going on. I don't, I don't know why I got there. Oh, gin is probably the main reason. We kept, we were so nervous backstage. We were just huffing drunk on this, like, oh my god, because like a live, obviously, as you say, a live version of of like a Dairy Girls skit. And we were all shit. I don't know why we were just like, like we, it was our first time. Like we were auditioning for Dairy Girls, and we we're panicking backstage, like pinning the wine and doing some gin, and then suddenly, was I was so talking about riding bees. 
good. The good. Com the, the performances were incredible. But also the audience, because presumably you'd never done Derry Girls live before. You'd never come never. out on stage as Derry Girls. It's a, it's, a, you know, it's a television show. It doesn't have a studio audience, single camera. And the hysteria when you came out dressed in school uniforms mm. and Sister Michael came out in a habit. And it was just hysteria. But also you did smash every single laugh line. Uh, every punchline was it was brilliant, it was brilliant, crack. phenomenal. And uh, uh, but ride the bees, and I remember afterwards. I mean, Amnesty were like, it was so funny. We're not sure we're going to keep all of the ride the bees material in the podcast because <laughs> it is also. I was like, you have to ride They're the like, bees. Yeah. What's the hashtag of the night? Oh my god! Well, I don't... It's it's funny how your conversations go like that. They just they just sort of keep going and going, and then suddenly you look back and you go, did I talk about riding the bee? Is that did that happen? Am I? Okay. I think it was in order that I think it was I think there was something about bees riding flowers and that's why but that's bees riding flowers okay. is, is the way that uh we you know is the important part of this of our ecosystem yes and that turned into somehow ride the bees save the environment well I think it was don't ride the bees but ride something else but I can't remember what that oh, other thing was. was don't ride the bees don't ride the bees and then it was but even that was... I probably didn't need to be said, though, to be fair. Like, it's pretty straightforward. Don't worry, guys. It's pretty... I mean, I think it was... Pretty very, straightforward. It was more comedy than activism, I think, at that point. I think the shift... You were there on stage to be funny, and no one... It was why? No one could have said you weren't funny. It was um, why? It was... Exactly. You were there to be funny, and you, man, did you deliver. That part is in, because you're not... You're not Derry Girls in that part. You are yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but... It was hard to tell the difference, if I'm perfectly honest. Because yeah. how much was Siobhan like Sister Michael? I know. That? She's brilliant. She's Sorry, When she gets brilliant. going, she's she's hilarious. Siobhan, Siobhan's brilliant. Brilliant crack. Really is. I mean, everyone was brilliant. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, uh, so habits going forward. You think hygiene. You're the first person to have said that. Most people have said, oh, like, you know, I won't be rushing around to so many meetings. I'll be care more careful with my time or... You know, they've said mm. uh, they'll be, you know, more connected to the community, or whatever. So it's really interesting that you've said that hygiene is a, yeah. is a sort of, and it's just a new awareness that we've got. I think it probably and makes I, me so really smelly, doesn't it? <laughs> no, the opposite. It makes okay. it makes me feel Good. like you're taking this very seriously, and you're mm. you're someone who's developed a new habit. Mm -hmm. Have you developed any? Have you taken up any hobbies? Because obviously, uh, you know, lockdown is a is a tricky time for a creative person. Mm. I mean, you're used to getting your teeth into a script and, you know, either auditioning, making self tapes, then going and creating a character and building that either on screen or stage. How, how is that for you not being able to have your creative juices stirred in that way? It, it, it can be a bit frustrating, I suppose. Like, I suppose everybody that's trapped in the house is. But um, I've attempted about five different things, and it's just all the last, like, two, three days. I've just done that thing where, you know, you get up and you're like, right, this is the day I'm going to start being a yoga expert. It's going to go bloody great. I'll be <laughs> teaching my own classes at the end of this. I'm going to be so good. And it lasted about about three days, and then I was like, Man, I can't be bothered. I'm going to eat some more and have a nap. That's kind of... I mean, I've been doing a bit of writing and stuff, but I've always kind of written and trying to make sense of all that for when yeah. this is over. And, and I suppose the awareness of like, this all just stops. So you have to sort of have a backup, I suppose, you know, and it's sort of maybe pull my finger out a bit in, in terms of writing, as I say, and trying to get something solid together that I can, I can use myself and, and, and sort of keep myself going for, and be productive. You know what I mean? Yes. But I want to say that, like, I'm getting up. I say get up in the morning. I use that term very loosely, the morning. <laughs> It's just like, it's still daytime, so, you know what I mean, and I'm awake. It's your morning, it's your body clock's morning. It is, it is, and then you feel like, should I have toast or pasta? It's that sort of time of day, you know what I mean? I do. And it, shall I, it is, shall I sleep through breakfast, and shall I just jump straight to lunch? Straight like to garlic bread, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Straight to supper. I Forget have, about breakfast, straight to garlic bread. Back in the day, I was able to sleep, if I was tired, um, as a teenager, certainly, but it, also in my 20s, if I was tired and I'd really overdone it, I could absolutely sleep till 4 p.m. And I yeah. cannot do that anymore. It's And I thought I'll always be the kind of person that, like, will overdo it. And then once a month or once every six weeks, or, uh, you know, or or just on a Saturday and Sunday, have a really long line, maybe not till mm. four, but till lunchtime or whatever. And now I find I can't do that as much. Uh, can you, can you, have you still got that ability? I mean, you're um, terribly young. Not not really, to be fair. Um, 
I get anxiety if I lie on too long. I don't know what it is. I feel like the working class guilt kicks in. And you wake up and you kind of go, well, I've achieved nothing in my life today. There's that sort of, it is sort of, yeah. it, I think if I have done it, say, a couple of days in a row, because I did do it, I did lie on quite late for a bit of this. And after a couple of days, I just I felt really guilty. And I don't know why. I felt like it gave me anxiety. Like getting yeah. up at like one in the afternoon. I don't know why, because I've got nothing to do and there's no, it's sort of retraining your brain for this, this whole, this whole lockdown, isn't it? It's very strange to, because if, if it was a different time, you'd think, well, I've wasted that morning. I could have been speaking to so-and-so. I could have done this. I could have went here, but all those options are gone. So, yeah, yeah. but the guilt's still there, I think, and the anxiety's still there of feeling like you've done nothing and you've been lazy. So it's kind do of you, trying to figure that out. Do you do any therapy or meditation or anything to sort of, ease that anxiety or is there anything that you do that's a sort of coping mechanism or at the moment is that coping mechanism in itself sleeps and snacks and just sort of getting through lockdown i think food is definitely i'm very i'm very much as i said i'm about a stone and i've enjoyed every bite i really have um i really have and it's just one of those things and i think i, I talk to myself a wee bit i don't know if it's called an inner monologue or whatever it's called but i sort of talk myself around you know if i'm feeling a bit a bit I've got anxiety, I feel a bit lower, a bit crap, because you get you get days I woke up and I just felt shit all day. I felt really down and I'm like, nothing's happened to me. Nobody is sick. I'm not sick. I don't know why. And there's people here a lot worse off than me. And you feel really down and then you feel bad for that. You feel about self-absorbed. So I think it's just, I just talk myself around. I literally have a conversation with myself and, and talk to myself with a, like a third party and just be like, yeah, like calm yeah. down. You're fine. It's no big deal. I, I think that's a yeah, that's a, an interesting strategy that you sort of have a conversation with yourself, maybe mm. talk to yourself as if you're a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a very healthy attitude towards food and body at the moment is to sort of nourish and nurture yourself. Mm -hmm. And if your body is not telling you, oh, I've got to, you know, some people their body is telling them I've got to go for a run every day and that's what their body is demanding. And if your body is not demanding that, I would say everyone should listen to their body in lockdown. Yeah, And whatever your body is asking you for, nurture your body. Because if you can, if you're in a situation where you're absolutely, where you can, and I understand we talk from a place of privilege when we say that, but mm -hmm. um, but I I think your instinct is absolutely right. And just saying, you know, I've enjoyed every bite, I think it's a great thing. Because mm -hmm. this is not, this, this, firstly, it doesn't matter anyway. But secondly, this is not, this is not forever. And pressuring yes. your body to do something it does not want to do when it's already mm -hmm. going through trauma and anxiety about the future is not a good call. Um, yeah. Somebody there saying you're, a, um, is such a great actress. Uh, and I Thank agree. You. you are a fantastic actress. Um, many mm -hmm. people are asking in the comments, uh, is there going to be a Dairy Girls season three? I think I know the answer to that, but I'll let you answer it because you are in fact a Dairy Girl. Yes, there is. Um, we're supposed to be doing it right now, obviously, but it's been pushed back. So as soon as we get the green light, as far as I'm aware, we're going to go ahead. But when that green light will be, it's sort of anybody's guess. Hopefully it won't be too long, but we're all ready to go. We're all ready to rock. Haven't seen any scripts yet, but we're, we're all ready to rock, which is why I'm sort of thinking, let's say about like eating and things like that, I'm making myself feel better. It's because, you know, you kind of, there's nothing sort of on the, on the cards coming up. There's this sort of vacuousness that was happening, mm -hmm. especially when the lockdown happened. And you're like, well, I'm supposed to be here at this date and that and do a caution fit in here and look like this person yeah. at this date. And all that's not there anymore. So it's it's kind of a bit about liberating as well just to go, fuck it. You know, yeah. Yeah. let's have some more. It's great. Good on you. And we are not going to come out of lockdown onto film sets overnight. I mean, that is clear. No. We're, we're going to know. Um, uh, somebody's saying it's all on all four and it really is. I mean, I am very much hoping that you will do some, come on the Guilty Feminist and do some stand-up comedy as we have discussed. Yes. Uh, because you have you're such a natural demeanour for it. And, um, it's terrifying though, it's terrifying. I know you say that, but talk to Susan McComer because she'd never done it. She came on the Guilty Feminist, did it for the first time. Every time she co-hosts, she's just like, yeah, I'll have, I'll have a go. It's like each time is like, yeah, I'll have a go. At yeah. And each time she blows the roof off the place. And she is now finally admitting that she's good at it and that maybe right. she'll maybe she'll put some of her the stories that she's told together and start to sort of think about you know doing that I, I only say this because she sort of mm -hmm. uh, put, mentioned it on instagram on an instagram story but she's really good at it and the thing is um you no one one thing susie said on instagram was oh should i be doing stand-up i haven't done the circuit sort of am i allowed and i said 
you know, do I have permission? Are the other stand-ups going to kind of go, oh, you're an actress trying to be a stand-up? I said, if the other stand-ups say that, then they should stop going up for sitcoms when they never went to drama school or did any training. Yeah, I was going to say, that happens the other way around, doesn't it? Because I said to her, any, so many, 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 not all, but many, many stand-up comedians would, I said, would push your grandmother to the ground <laughs> in order to get your role on Year of the Rabbit. I'm sorry, but that's just mm. a fact. They would leave yeah. Granny in the gusser to climb Push her in front of a bus. I mean, some would go that far. <laughs> Many, yeah. many would certainly. I would. Walk, many would certainly walk past her and pretend not to have seen her if she'd fallen yes. over her own accord. Just um, step over. Yeah, many, many. Mm. And she went, "Oh, that's a good thought. I hadn't thought of that." I said, "There are comedians who are now in the West End singing and dancing. Have never really trained, but mm. they did. They did their time in Edinburgh. And you know, you can. It's performing. Performing is performing. You will bring skills to stand up that most stand up comics won't have." And stand-up mm -hmm. comics will bring to acting, you know, certain things about timing and performance. And if you could do the job, you can do the job. And I think no one is more qualified to tell your stories and your observations than you. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else in the world more, more qualified to tell your stories. It's not a mystical art. If you can get up and the Guilty Feminist audience will just adore you. They will be so wanting to love you. You, you kind okay. of won't be able to go wrong. It won't okay, be so wrong. So that's good advice. I feel good like talk. begin at the guilty feminist. We'll do it like in a five hundred seater if we're allowed into five hundred seaters, and yeah. it won't be intimidating. It'll just be amazing. And then once you've done it once, it will be um, a, a mild addiction. I'm not going to lie. I mean, okay, it's a little bit like saying just have a small amount of crack and see if you like <laughs> it. Yeah, you know me. I love crack. I'm <laughs> all with the crack. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the C R A I C spelling or the C R A C K, the Irish one, uh, the Irish one. If you're watching <laughs> and you're from the government, she meant the Irish crack. Boris, he's always on this rascal, isn't he? Boris Johnson will never not be on my Instagram live. Any time I go live, Boris is there. I'm like, don't you have a country to run, Boris? Off, Boris, like stop. He's always in the comments, he's trolling away. He's always like, oh, I'm in Durham. You know, just <laughs> hanging out with my friends. Hi from Durham. Shut up, Boris. Hanging, hanging out with Brush 12 friends. We're just like, we're all got our arms around each other. I'm yeah, we're all on hands. I've got my tongue in Dominic Cummings' mouth. Dirtbag. It's so cl classic, Boris. I mean, it is what he's like. Um, Dave's here. He's got his member in a penis, in a pig. <laughs> his member yeah. in a penis. I don't know how that would be practical. Member um, in a penis and a pig. <laughs> penis and a pig is practical. Yeah. Member in a penis, that's penis and a penis. Impractical. It would have to have a well, large hole. I think we're going on day we're gonna do pornographic stuff now, aren't we? You think we're gonna get cut off? Um uh yeah. Anyway, yeah. I've got some new I'm a feminist butts because of uh this lockdown. Okay. Uh, so I'm a feminist, but next time we go into lockdown, if there is ever an unfortunate next time, I would really like to suggest that a hairdresser come and live in my flat rent free. Yes. And I could pay her for her services anytime I needed like a blow dryer or anything. Or you should have one of those, you know, like remember they, they made it with um, the big plastic on the plastic arms or, or someone's back so they could hug their granny. You know, you oh, could have one yeah. of those situations. That's yes. actually a really good idea. Just in general. Really good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Just so, have, yeah, a, hug, a granny hugging curtain, but for... For hair. hair. For sporting stuff and hugging your granny. Because she's in front of the bus anyway. We've just fucked her in front of that bus, so... <laughs> she's, she might be in front of the bus. Um, okay. So, yeah, so I just feel like my hair is not being what it could be. So if I'm a feminist, but I would consider moving a, if I had the room, a, a hairdresser in rent-free, and I would also pay her, just to be clear, hashtag feminism, uh, because... I didn't know how important my hair was to me until lockdown. Do you have any I'm a feminist buts? Any moments where you've gone, oh, oh. Um, cosmetic ones or things that you miss? Well, as I said earlier, I don't keep talking about the fact that I love eating food. This is ridiculous. It's like the theme of this. No. It's time. But it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm a feminist. But I've literally sat and grabbed bits and gone, ooh. You know, but you just sort of body shaming thing. And I'm, even though I'm like, no. 
don't bother shame yourself, don't blah, blah, blah. I find myself being like, you know, it's like grabbing and just like wiggling yourself and wiggling your stomach and just doing things. If that's your well, size and your ass, you're like, what? I'm feeling about that about it. I could do that any time before lockdown. So I, I, I don't feel that's a, I don't, I, 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 uh, I, I, I've got one, up, I've got an I'm a feminist butt up there. Um, I'm a feminist butt. I wouldn't mind being able to go to the gym or something and be really selfish like that, even though I never would, but yeah, you kinda, you're looking, going, is our gym's open? And you're like, not that I'm a huge gym bunny, but just to kind of get out there and. Mm -hmm. I've and, been doing Zoom personal training in my flat and I, and I would like to keep doing that. And Zoom, and I've been doing Zoom dancing in my flat. Fair um, lady, Cons consistently. A, yeah, but because oh. but, but, it's the only way I'll get out of bed, Jamie. Like, right. I, 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 I won't get out of bed otherwise. Um, I, I uh, Working from bed's the best when you get a heap of emails, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, it's good to stay here for a bit. Yeah. Just work, work from bed. Did you just yeah, answer I always email? do that all the time. I go back to bed to work, but I'm not really in bed. I'm more like just lying on my bed working on a laptop or something. Yeah. Um, have you been, speaking of which, speaking of laptops, have you been watching anything, reading anything, binging anything? Has anything kind of captured your imagination during lockdown? Could be escapist, could be feminist, could be um, fan gripping. I find I've been taking a bit of comfort in re-watching old stuff that I like, you know, like the American How Office. How many people are saying this? Parks and it's an nostalgia fest. It is. I it's think nice. it's escapism. It, it is nice, and I've, I've I've discovered Good Girls on Netflix, oh, and yeah. that that's brilliant. That's escapism. It's just like high octane, sexy, just so it's it's got a bit of a uh, what do you call it? Desperate Housewives vibe. You know that sort of good girls. Mm, it's brilliant. It's good. It's good. Good crack, but it's it's just about sexy and really. There's always something happening. It's it's very dramatic, so it's not, it's good to watch. It's it's brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna check that mm. out. Have you seen Normal People yet? I haven't, but I need to watch it. I hear it. that's very sexy. People are going on and on about how sexy it is. I've only watched one episode, and I found mm -hmm. that bit was perfectly good. But I, I I found it sort of it 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 wasn't kind of what I was expecting. Everyone's going, oh my god, this is so sexy. But I have to push mm. on, and I will push on. Because people have gone ballistic for Mad it. Mad for it. Nothing has been reported as this sexy since Andrew Scott played the hot priest. I know, I know. And the chain, I'll be honest, I agree. That, that wee tiny chain. It's like oh. every boy in the 90s. Do me, it's the equivalent. I, I used to be a huge fan of the double two hips and a guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know, I think there's something very sexy about a, a man who's really confident he's in masculinity that he does things that are stereotypically female. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I do. But here's just something you're like, oh, that's not for you, but you've got it. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is of such a specific kink, and I love it. It's and like it's a man so comfortable with his masculinity, he can go for a double hoop. Love um, it. Who was your first crush? Did you have a celebrity crush? So I was actually talking about this recently, and it's very weird and specific. Um, but there was a TV show, a channel in Derry years ago called Channel 9, right? And I was maybe starting secondary school when it came out. And it used to play music videos and do like sort of local people chatting and stuff. But it was mostly music videos. Um, and for some reason, they got like a massive influx of Latin American music, okay. um, yeah. which was, I think it was big on MTV at the time, but it was just for some reason, this channel, that's all played. So it was like early Servic Iglesias and Mark Anthony and, and things like that. So I just had this massive like goal of dating someone who was Latin. I thought that's that's obviously what gorgeous men are, you know what I mean? And I remember seeing um Amica Iglesias, what do you call his first song? By the most. Look at me letting on like I don't know it. I obviously I'm done. Hero, that no. You can take away the original. Oh okay. I obviously know but I'm not gonna sing it. Oh, but oh please, please oh, it, was so, it was so sexy. And he had like there was all this really sexy dance and all the women were really gorgeous and it. it just looked like you're in this nightclub and it just looked like a great life. I remember thinking, I want that life. That looks brilliant. It was really sexy and attractive and a bit sweaty, but like not smelly. It's great. Were, were, was it in Spanish, that song? No. Well, the chorus was a wee bit, but it was in English. I'm sure there's a Spanish version. That's what great. he sort of does, doesn't he? He does English so you can understand it, then a bit of sexy Spanish, and you don't really care that you can't understand it. But then you sing along like you do, and you're like, I'm a sexy Spanish, but you don't. Yeah, yeah. It's like one word. So Enrique Iglesias, Iglesias yes. was your first crush and you wanted his life more than you wanted him, really, by the sound I, of it. Just as a package. 
Do you know what I mean? If I could look exactly like the girls in the video as well and do their dancing, that would have been great as well. Yeah. I felt like it all came together. How you know, as a bundle. old were you when you, these videos came out? Do you remember? I was about 12. I was really young. Like, 12? But, you know, yeah. About that, I... So 12 years old, a little bit of Enrique Iglesias in, in, in Derry. That is, that's yes. quite Derry Girls, actually, that, isn't it? I suppose it is, isn't it? We're sort of slightly, you know... Yeah, a little bit of a little. Think bit you're of, never going to have that, so drink it and while you can, kind of thing. Yeah, like when they all run off to see the take it, take that concert. Mm. Love that episode. Love that episode. Love it. Love it. Did take that really come to? Uh, was it Belfast that, that, that uh, in the story that they run off to oh, Belfast? I think they did. I think Lisa actually went to Belfast with their friends. I think she actually did that. Was that from her real life? Yeah, most of it is her real life. Most wow. of it. I, know, I know she's mad. She's Amazing. mad. Amazing. Um, do you have any, uh, an act of feminism or activism we could help you with today, we could get behind? There is um, a page, a, a charity I follow on um, Instagram, and they're called Bloody Good Period. Nice. And they provide um, menstruation products for um, refugees and asylum seekers and people who generally can't really afford um, uh, menstruation, product, menstruation products. Yeah. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm really smart. Yeah, but um, yeah, there's a really good organization um, and there's another one called Alliance for Choice um, and there's one at that specific brand, uh, type of it is um, Alliance Dairy for Choice, sorry, and it's about abortion rights and sexual health rights for women. Wonderful. Can you mm -hmm. make stories of those and at The Guilty Feminist? We'll mm -hmm. share them and then everybody here who's watching it, if you've got any money to donate, please Give them, even if it's just a pound or five pounds would be, they would be so grateful. But if you don't have any money because you've been furloughed or, you know, you're worried about your future, that's fine. If you could just follow them or amplify them or both. So like if suddenly they got 150 new followers, it would make them feel like bloody hell, what's happened today? Like you'd really give them the, the kind of uh, motivation to come back in tomorrow at a difficult time when money is scarce and people are of course distracted by COVID and all the terrible things happening in America right now and um, so if you could just give them a follow or repost one of their posts or both um, if you don't have any money but and all because also if you repost it there are loads of people who still are on the same wage they're on but there's nowhere to spend their money their, their disposable mm -hmm. income like they're not going to the pub their gym membership's been suspended they're not going to the cinema they're not going to Pizza Express and they might give them a tenner so uh, post it, share it with mates who you think might like it. Um, so, so one is bloody good period, and the other one is abortion Alli rights in dairy. Alliance for choice. Alliance for choice. Mm -hmm. um, so we will we will make stories of those, and we'll post them. And if you could just check them out, um, and also if any of the TV uh, recommendations that you had, if you want to make a little story of them, if you like them, yeah. Is there anything else you're doing, you're in that we can see that we can make a story of. Um. It's not coming out at the moment. I just, I just did a feature in South Africa, which was great fun, Ooh. great crack. At the start of the year, it's called Redeeming Love. It'll be out next year. Um, and we just got home in time and just got it finished just before all this happened, which was amazing. So lucky. I was in for that. Post, cause so many people know, are like halfway done. Know. They had two days left to shoot and mm. they got locked I am. Um, I was in South Africa and I remember all this was sort of happening. And I remember I did the same thing as a lot of people at the start. I thought, oh, it's probably just something small and it was happening in China it just spread in another country and I was like oh it's probably not that big of a day got home and then like a week later it was like countries were starting to lock down like Italy locked down it was like Jesus wow. just in time you know lucky well, um, I'm so glad you got it made and I'm so glad you got home in time and you didn't get stuck in South Africa because obviously you want to be with your family and, and near your family yeah. and uh, you know in your home um, what, who do you play in the film? I play a prostitute called Lucky. Ah, so you, yeah. I, I is it a positive representation of a sex worker? It is. It's basically um, it's a book. It's it's a book called Redeeming Love. Um, it's an adaptation, and it is set in the eighteen hundreds during the gold rush in America. Wow. So it's very much a realistic representation. But the women that are the women that are written are, are written very well and they're very well rounded. So it's it's Great. nice nice thing to I play. I trust you to pick a good mm -hmm. script because I know that you picked Dairy Girls to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dairy Girls picked me, but yeah, no, you're right, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, but I bet you knew it was a good script when you read it. My God, amazing! To the point where uh, we always say this at the very first um, filming, 
I remember Nicholas saying, "But we were all like, oh, this is brilliant. Nicholas said, can you imagine if this done well, people dressed up as us for Halloween? We were like, don't be so silly, it's ridiculous, Nicola. And then, of course, it's, bloody, it's happening. It's Every so hen party. Happening. and I know it's mad. People dress up as you all the time. I've seen, I've seen people dressing up. In fact, on International Women's Day, I saw someone at a party dressed as me and someone at a party dressed as you. Amazing. That's brilliant. Yeah. I love um, that. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was, I was, I was really chuffed. Um, and I just want to say, um, uh, so watch, d watch Dairy Girls. Uh, it's all on all four. I think it's also on Netflix. Or have I made that up? Yes, it is. It's on all fours uh, and Netflix. And uh, also, um, as I said before, Jamie and I did uh, the yeah. Secret Policeman's tour together. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, next week, Amnesty International is doing Secret Police, the Secret Policeman's Ball Unlocked. Well, we're going back and looking at some of the old sketches. So we're looking at the four Yorkshire men, which we turned into the four Yorkshire women. Um, that's coming out, I think, Monday. I'll make, I'll put up all the socials after this as well, so you can see. Then we're having a reunion with um, the Goodness Gracious Me gang, because we're talking about going for an English. And Nish Kumar's going to do that as well. Um, and we've already recorded an amazing reunion, but then they're going to do a Q&A. Um, on Monday, Siobhan, who plays Sister Michael and Juliet Stevenson, are going to do a Q&A because um, they, they both talked about being in the sketch of the four Yorkshire women, the famous Monty Python sketch, instead of four Yorkshire men. And then on Friday night, they're releasing uh, one of the old Secret Policeman's Balls, We Know Where You Live Live, um, which was at Wembley Arena. And so that's a, and a week of Amnesty comedy events next week. So uh, if you can all tune in for all of those, I'll, I'll make it all, on, I'll put it all on the social so you can see them all. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. Is there anything else you want to plug or tell us about before we go? Uh, nope, just stay safe. I hope to see everybody soon on the old Dairy Girl set. So finally, Hopefully. I'm going to ask you this then. If, if suddenly lockdown was over and you could do anything you used to do before, what would you do? I would probably, I know I didn't do it before, but I'd go visit my sister. Uh, she just had a baby and haven't met her yet. Oh, I know. I haven't met the baby yet. Oh my God. I've seen her through a car window with it. So I'll definitely go see my niece. Uh, you go and smell the baby's head. I know. I've seen loads of pictures of her, and it's just, it's adorable, but, you know. Do you see her on FaceTime? Face we FaceTime. Face, I want to see my sister as well. I mean, my sister and best friends are really close, so it's kind of weird that she's gone through this huge life experience, and I haven't met, I haven't seen her. It's really, it's really weird. I'm sure, obviously, a lot of people are going through similar stuff. But it's no, just, I it's mean, bizarre. Are you, maybe you should have followed your sisterly instincts. I mean, any any sister would understand following your sisterly instincts and just like driving to Durham. Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, I just follow my instincts. Just follow my instincts. Anyone would understand you following I wanted to see if I could still see her as a person, if she was still there in apparition. I mean, I mean. I mean. I just wanted to test my eyesight to see if I could still see the baby. Yeah, just was all about my eyesight. My God, can you imagine? I mean. Jesus wept. I mean. Jesus wept hard. And long. Jesus Christ on a bike. Good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jamie, it's been such a... Is it okay for me to call you... I never know if I'm allowed to call you Jamie or I always call you Jamie Lee. Beyonce will do. Thanks. Beyonce will do. Beyonce, it has yeah. been an amazing, amazing time spent with you. You are such a charming delight. And I can't wait to have you on The Guilty Feminist doing stand-up. We're more than allowed to be. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be you. amazing. I'll work on it with you. I'll work on it with you before yeah. you come on. Uh, we'll work up a set together, and honestly, you are going to smash it. And then, as I said, it's just a tiny, tiny bit of crack. And I'll be strong in Edinburgh before you know it. You will be. <laughs> you will be. Um, Happy been Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. And Thanks um, for having me. We've got some brilliant people on The New Normal next week, and I'll post them all. Uh, be back 6 o'clock Monday, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.